showed up in boots and ruined your blind tie affair. The last one to know, the last one to show, I was the last one you thought you'd see there. And I saw a surprise. All right, what's a day without a little bit of Garth Brooks, right? <clears throat> I have no idea why I did that. I just wanted to hear that song and. And I guess more importantly, I want you guys to hear that song. <laughs> so, right. so uh, Mass 6996, guys, it's, uh, it's like 9 o'clock in the morning, so no, I haven't, uh, I haven't had a beer. So uh, just uh, to keep, uh, just uh, do this stuff to keep it from getting too crazy, okay. Um, so uh, Mass 6996, Measurement and Education Research Quantitative. Guys, what this is about, uh, what you're going to learn in this video is the role of measurement uh, in research plus um, you know, a lot of other cool stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about aptitude and achievement, uh, different types of uh, uh, you know, norm referenced and criterion uh, referenced uh, test, data gathering te techniques, standardized tests, just the stuff that you see there. Uh, this, is, this is an important video. Uh, they're all important now because it's getting to crunch time, but, um, you know, I, I, I've, been, I've been, you know, been teaching now 25 years, and I feel that uh, the, the reason I've you know, been pretty decent in what I do is I keep it real, and I know that some of these, and, you know, I guess in, in, in terms of keeping it real, I know that some of these videos are equivalent to, you know, going to the dentist and getting a root canal. They're not exciting, they're, you know, they're, they're, but because they're so important. So, uh, you know, it's, it's so tempting sometimes to be watching one of these and say, I just can't do this right now. Darbell's killing me. Uh, it's so boring and turn it off. But, uh, you know, think about, you know, how you got where you are today. You got where you are today because you persevered and you were patient and, you know, you were persistent. Uh, you went to class. You didn't get up in the middle of class and leave, even if it got boring. Uh, or at least I hope you didn't. Uh, so, so, guys, you know, suck it up. Watch this stuff. There's a couple of really, really key things <clears throat> um, in this video, and I'll point it out. Um, and, you know, the stuff that's, uh, you know, uh, kind of can, can pass by the way, you know, I'll treat it that way, uh, uh, you know, as well. So, uh, so guys, hang in there with me. Uh, this is all getting you ready to, to, to you know, start your, start your, uh, your research project. So, uh, first thing... Uh, you know, what's the aim of quantitative research? Uh, it's just to get, uh, get a, a better understanding of relationships uh, among variables and populations. Um, an example, what's the relationship between intelligence and creativity among high school students? Uh, first of all, you have to realize that you can't observe intelligence. Well, <laughs> actually, there may be some contradictions on that one. Uh, and uh, you may be able to uh, observe creativity, but you can't observe it to... A level at which you can you can truly measure intelligence and creativity from from person to person. Uh, you also cannot directly observe all high school student students, uh, and in the end, it doesn't mean you have to remain ignorant or uninformed about the relationship. It just means you got to go around it uh, uh, in the correct manner. Um, you know, it, my PhD is technically in what's called statistics, uh, measurement, and, and uh, evaluation. And sometimes people think measurement in terms of analysis and Lebesgue measure and things of that nature. <laughs> Trust me, that's not it. I barely survived my um, two semesters of, of measure. Uh, what, what my measurement, what, what I studied is measurement like I'm uh, presenting in, in the, uh, this video. How do we attain... Uh, uh, credible, useful, uh, valid, reliable measurements um, for things like intelligence and creativity. Um, measurements, uh, some are very straightforward. Uh, education background, number of children, things that we could ask someone where uh, the result uh, is, is a single response. Uh, some measurement uh, is, is much more complex. Um, and I mentioned a couple of those there. Um, when research deals with a, a complex construct, aptitude, self-esteem, interest, motivation, personality, achievement, intelligence, there's some of them that I mentioned there. Uh, we have a couple of ways that we can uh, obtain these measures. First thing, and this is the one that's highly encouraged considering the time constraints that you're under, is to use uh, an instrument that's already been developed and gone through the, uh, the testing uh, validity and reliability stages. 
there's four of them there that I mentioned. Uh, I have uh, used all but I've never used the second bullet, uh, but I've used uh, the other three. Uh, the second thing, and, and uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's definitely worthy of considering, is to develop your own instrument. But uh, it's probably not encouraged for this research because, again, you guys are under such uh, uh, a strict time constraint. Uh, the key measurements. Uh, uh, the key measuring instruments uh, that I'm going to talk a little bit about in this, um, in this video. Tests are uh, by far the most widely used measurement uh, in quantitative edu education research. Uh, I, I got a really, really, really fancy schmancy here. I said a ta test, it's formally defined as a set of standard stimuli presented to individuals in order to elicit responses on the basis of which a numerical score can be assigned. I have no idea where I found that, but I thought it was really cool. Uh, tests can be given in different, uh, get different forms. Uh, Obviously, we can give them in written form. We do that a lot in mathematics. Uh, we can um, give uh, oral exams. I've had those in my comps and qualifying exams. And we can actually do a performance uh, assessment. Uh, test score, based on a representative sample of an individual's behavior and is an indicator to the extent uh, which the subject possesses the characteristic being measured. So guys, uh, test that... Uh, have available measures uh, are both cognitive and non-cognitive. Uh, I usually think of cognitive as being more of a written form and oral, non-cognitive uh, in, in some sense uh, in the performance setting, but not always. There's there's overlap. Guys, uh, huge, huge, huge uh, screen here. Objectivity, validity, and reliability. Now I'm going to get into validity and reliability in about uh, three or four more videos. In fact, I've already started it. Uh, but uh, just, just to get the ball rolling, uh, objectivity is the extent of agreement among scores. Uh, multiple choice and true-false are objective because the scores make no decision. Uh, essay test and open response are not objectives because scores are influenced by judgment and opinions of the scores. And that last bullet there, the essay test and open response items are not objective you know, you know, that uh, under the objectivity he uh, uh, heading, uh, it always amazes me how sometimes teachers. And this ha this actually happened to me. I was taking uh, I took a calculus one class uh, at the University of Kentucky, and I had a uh, a ninety one point four something four eight four seven. Isn't it funny? I remember this, and this was I took this back in probably 1980. Oh gosh, uh, 86, I believe it was. So anyway, and I remember it to this day, some you know million years later. Uh, but my uh, professor, uh, now I had the highest score in the grade in the in the class, and he would not give me an A. He gave me an A minus. And technically, according to his grading scale, I think I was two hundredths away. I think it was 91.48. And he always, if, once you got to 0.5, he would round up. Uh, but he wouldn't give me the two hundredths. And he's a nice guy. It wasn't that he was being a jerk or anything. But uh, anyway, it, 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 I, I find those situations very interesting when teachers and professors think that their grading is a perfect science. Every exam that we had was open response. He gave partial credit. And I will guarantee you, if he graded those, those assignments and uh, exams a day later, we probably all would have gotten different, uh, different scores. Because that's just the way it is. Sometimes we're in better moods. Sometimes we're not in uh, as good of moods. I've noticed something uh, to, to, to point out my weaknesses in this. I've noticed when I uh, grade open response items, that if a, if a particular item is missed by most people and I feel like I adequately covered it, I will become a harsher grader on that item as I go through the, the class's um, assignments or exams. I think it's just called the pissed off approach uh, or the pissed off effect. Uh, you know, I'm like, I've covered this, I've covered this, I've covered this, you know, I covered it adequately. Why aren't you guys getting it? And uh, the frustration level goes up, uh, and I've noticed that. And guys, I, I, you know, I have this is my background. I have this on my uh, on my radar. So, 
uh, you know if you've got it on your radar and it happens, the, uh, the, the likelihood that it could happen if you don't have it on your radar. Guys, validity is the extent to which a test measures what it claims to measure. Uh, and, and again, we, you know, we give these exams in mathematics and we, uh, we want to uh, see whether or not a student can factor. Can you think of all the possible questions that you could ask to see if somebody can factor? And you know what? Maybe it deals with twos and threes or fours and eights or you know the, the, you know how we uh, the foil when we come up with the with the end product and, and of course the addition uh, to get the the inner part. Uh, so you know some numbers are just more convenient to me than others. I have no idea, but to this day, nine times six still makes me hesitate. Eight times six doesn't. Nine times six and and uh, and uh, what's what's the other one? Uh, well, there's another one. Uh, you know, in the multiplication tables, still makes me hesitate a split second. So uh, we think that all these are the same. You know, if we want to factor x squared minus x minus six versus x squared minus x plus six, uh, uh, you know, we 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 think that uh, they that that, that that you know students, um, uh, well, x squared minus x plus six wouldn't even anyway. Um, yeah, I would. Okay, so it's been a while since I've taught this. So. Uh, reliability is the extent to which uh, test measures uh, accurately and consistency consistently. And again, we'll get into this uh, more often. But uh, guys, when we give an exam, uh, we, we need to consider things about uh, are our uh, exams valid and are they reliable? Um, and again, you're going to learn far more about that than you probably ever cared to know. Uh, achievement test. Uh, we we are you know bombarded with achievement tests in education setting, and the achievement tests are used in education research and school systems to measure what students have learned. I just typed it, and there it is, and I'm not even sure I agree with that. But uh, uh, guys, standardized tests or published tests that have resulted from skillful preparation by experts. I can't even say that without laughing. Uh, standardized tests cover broad academic objectives. We're most concerned with mathematics. Uh, norms on standardized tests to allow scores to be uh, compared, and the norms may, may be based on uh, you know very specific criteria. Uh, a lot of our uh, our state testing, uh, the the tests are created by so-called state experts, and so it's kind of limited to a, a geographic area, a region, namely the state. Uh, I uh, got something to keep in mind of these things because of cultural uh, changes and changes in educational practice. Uh, achievement and aptitude tests need to be renormed periodically. Uh, a test that um, it's kind of actually kind of fun to to go back and look at test questions that were given back in the, uh, for example, like 1960s. Um, uh, it deals with things like eight track tapes and things like that. My daughters have no earthly idea what an eight, what an eight track tape is. Uh, but anyway, because of these things, um, uh, the, you know, the, the, the exams need to be changed uh, from time to time. Actually, uh, quite, quite often, actually. Uh, norm versus standard. A uh, norm is not necessarily a goal or criterion of what should be. It's more of what is. Uh, test norms are based on actual performance of a specified group, not on standards or performance. Uh, standard uh, is the goal or criterion of uh, what should be. So it's the, uh, the thing we all aspire to, uh, to be above. Some of the testing stuff is really kind of interesting to me that uh, uh, the, the No Child Left Behind wants essentially what they want is, is everyone to score above the mean. I never really figured out that that one's going to happen. But uh. Oh, speaking of, wow, that's a great segue. The accountability movement standardized tests are widely uh, used to measure student achievement. Uh, the No Child Left Behind Act from 2001 mandica mandated the states have instruments uh, to ensure accurate measurements. Uh, guys, yada, yada, yada. I gave you some examples there of, um, uh, of a couple, uh, you know, Indiana, Illinois, California, Ohio, Kentucky, and so on and so forth uh, that have tests that are specific to, uh, to their state. Uh, and, of course, that makes it difficult to compare from state to state. Uh, careful consideration when choosing a test. Uh, and I'm, and I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, there's a slight bit of overkill here because, um, you know, we're, we're just a testing society. We love tests. 
Uh, my wife, I don't think she's ever met a test she didn't love. Uh, and uh, I don't think I ever met a test that I did love. So, uh, so you know, if, if you guys get into some sort of situation where you may compare uh, teaching techniques or maybe you come up with some experimental technique that you want to uh, uh, examine the effectiveness of, uh, there's a chance you're going to do some sort of uh, control experimental uh, uh, study and in the end, you're going to give them a common test. So uh, when choosing that common test, uh, now that the stakes are higher, you know, once you get me behind behind you and you're not, uh, this, this, this research project isn't looming over your head, and I'm sitting here telling you you got to do it the right way, you know, after you get your degree, you know, go and do whatever you want to do with test. But if you're going to use a test in research, then this is what you're going to have to do. First of all, you have to choose a test that's reliable and valid. Uh, that's one of the reasons you want to choose something that's existing because reliability and validity analysis have been done on these particular types of tests. Uh, there must be a direct link between the test content and the curriculum to which the students have been exposed. In other words, uh, the means and the ends must be connected. I think that was a John Dewey quote. Um, you, know, what, uh, you know, what you teach kids <laughs> is what you need to be testing them on. And it's surprising how much... Uh, how sometimes that doesn't happen. Yeah, and there's probably been times in uh, classes with me at the graduate level you've suspected uh, the, the, the connection between uh, test content and uh, what was covered. Uh, standardized tests necessarily measure broad and general content objectives. Uh, that's pretty obvious. A standardized tests may be technically superior but not appropriate for measuring the specific objectives of a research study. Um, you know, it, Truly important there. Uh, standardized tests tend to, I guess, evaluate more generally. And you may have very specific objectives for your research study where a standardized test may not be appropriate. Uh, the test may be, must be valid and reliable for the subjects. Uh, and guys, keep in mind accommodations must be made. Uh, research made test, a researcher made test. Uh, when standardized tests are not suitable for specific objectives, uh, researchers may construct their own test. Uh, the advantage, uh, the test can be tailor-made. It's going to more closely uh, match the content domain associated with your study. Uh, disadvantage, you got to do some uh, reliability validity analysis. So example, you wish to compare the effects of two teaching methods on student achievement in mathematics. Uh, the use of available and excellent standardized tests in mathematics, which were created to measure a broad set of objectives, may not focus on the outcomes that you desire. So you decide to construct your own. Well, guys, if you construct your own instrument, you're going to have to pay close attention to reliability and validity. So what you may consider is it, uh, administering a draft of the test to a small group who does, who's not participating in your study, but are similar to the participants, and uh, check the test validity and reliability. Uh, and by the way, Thorndike, I put Thorndike is the man with the smiley face. So when I think of um, content validity and reliability, uh, I think of Thorndike. It seems like the Thorndike and, and maybe his wife, uh, I don't know, there's, a, there's a, another person he publishes a lot with that... Uh, has a name hyphen Thorndike, and I don't even know that it's his wife, but it, I've, I've always kind of been led to believe that uh, it is, but uh, don't hold me to that one. Uh, norm and criterion reference test. I'm sure this is something that you've heard a lot about. Um, norm referenced at the end of the day, I think compare, compare, compare. Uh, they give you, um, you know, they give you standardized scores, uh, but uh, they give them uh, to you in terms of percentiles usually. So it gives you uh, uh, a way to, to compare. Uh, you know, the ACT. Uh, you, you, know, you think about the ACT. We all know that a score of 32 is good. But what if you didn't know that? What if I said there's this new test that's PRQ and the, my daughter got a score of 132 on it? Well, that doesn't tell us anything, right? We don't know how the test uh, has been scaled. But if I tell you that my daughter scored at the 92nd percentile, then it gives you an idea of her, the location of her score as compared to everyone else uh, uh, who supposedly has ever taken the score or ever will. So that's norm reference. Criterion referenced uh, really doesn't 
uh, compare you to other people, it just looks at, uh, at some level of mastery, however, whatever that threshold may be, uh, on the content that's being, uh, that's being tested. Uh, guys, norm reference test items are selected. Uh, items are selected that will yield a wide range of scores. That makes no sense, but uh, pretend it does. And the uh, researcher must be concerned with the range of difficulty uh, and the power of the items to discriminate uh, among the individuals. Something I found interesting in examining tests over uh, uh, the uh, uh, well over some of my uh, career, and this is not examining tests in you know high schools or colleges or things like that. But this is looking at at large scale assessments, things like NELS and NAEP and uh, uh, you know uh, 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 National Association of Education Progress. Uh, is test items as okay let's say you've got a test item that was in a test uh, 10 years ago and then the next year it was still there and the next year it was still there well testers test makers seem to throw out questions once people start getting them correct so what's an item you, you when you do an item analysis not only comprehensive analysis but an item analysis once the item gets to a point to where most people are getting it, then that will be thrown out and replaced with uh, 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 tip, usually a more challenging uh, question. Uh, criterion reference test uh, items are selected uh, solely on the basis of how well they measure a specific set of instructional objectives. So again, uh, there's a threshold that's set uh, on what you think means that a student knows or doesn't know uh, uh, content. Uh, you know that's that's you know when we start dichotomizing uh, quantitative scales, that that's where things get kind of wacky. Uh, it's it's it still kind of blows the mind that uh, you know we draw this line typically at sixty percent, where if you get a sixty percent, you 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 pass the class, and if you get a below sixty percent, you fail the class. And I'm a realist. I understand that we have to have these lines in the sand. We have to give grades because that's what we're expected to do. But really, think about it. 60% of some student has a 60.1% and another student has a 59.9%. So those two students are what? Two tenths of a percent different? But one, we're saying, well, you get to go on to the next class and one we're saying, uh, you don't get to go on to the next class. It's also been shown that those decisions of, uh, you know, bumping students who have lower grades into higher uh, is typically based on how well the student was liked by the teacher. Uh, there's some studies out there that actually show that. So, uh, you know, we live in a, kind of a measurement crazy world, uh, especially in education, because, you know, we're all forced to give tests. Or, I'm sorry, we're all uh, forced to give grades, and uh, we, we have to cut the score some at, at some percentage so something for you to ponder all right uh, performance measures uh, performance test is typically considered with what a student can do and uh, and not what a student knows uh, I think the one we've all done is a driver's test uh, we jump in a car and we have to parallel park and all those uh, cool things uh, when we were 16 um, I don't think that really told the person what I knew about driving it's just uh, it was just a performance issue uh, guys aptitude test uh, I find these to be extremely interesting uh, especially when I think about aptitude versus achievement and some people feeling that these are two completely different things uh, aptitude uh, measures an individual's ability to perceive relationships solve problems and apply knowledge in a variety of contexts um, Aptitude test, and what I'm attempting to do on the screen is just uh, bounce off the ideas of aptitude versus achievement uh, and get you kind of to compare, uh, to, or at least to think about these a little bit. Uh, aptitude tests uh, attempt to measure general ability or potential for learning a body of knowledge or skills. And I think it's important there, uh, potential for learning. So when I think of an aptitude test, I think of it's a measurement that provides some snapshot. Uh, of that person's potential to learn. 
uh, an achievement test, uh, on the other hand, is a snapshot of what uh, the student uh, has supposedly already learned. Keeping in mind measurement errors and, and testing issues. Um, so, uh, guys, aptitude tests again may measure what is capable, uh, what put a student is capable of learning, and achieve, achievement uh, measures what one has already learned. Hopefully, uh, you guys already know this. Uh, so, a lot of people uh, like to think is aptitude as innate, and achievement uh, uh, is required. That's not right. I should say while well, achievement is acquired, not required. So it uh, uh, looks like the spell check uh, <laughs> uh, didn't do correctly. Guys, aptitude versus achievement. Uh, the most in, uh, useful distinction in education, especially when we get into uh, uh, looking at placement, uh, is that aptitude tests uh, are used to predict future uh, performance <clears throat> while achievement tests are used to uh, measure present performance. Uh, some aptitude tests that we run into quite a bit, ACT, SAT, and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, one thing to note, researchers often use aptitude tests uh, as covariates. So you guys remember ANCOVA from, from, uh, t from some previous class? Uh, individual aptitude test, uh, the Stanford Binet Weschler has three. Uh, this is what my wife does. She administers these types of tests. Uh, and uh, what, uh, you know, the, we, talk, we talk in education a lot about learning disabilities. And um, I think the, uh, uh, the most agreed upon measure for determining learning disabilities is that there is a significant difference between the aptitude measurement and the uh, achievement measure. Um, so I live in a house where we have these conversations quite a bit. Guys, there are group aptitude tests. The, ap the, the aptitude tests that uh, I gave you on the previous screen are for individual, but um, I think back in World War II, they wanted to give aptitude tests to about 1.5 million soldiers. Uh, and there's some uh, group aptitude test that, uh, uh, you know, there they are. <laughs> if that's ever something you need, which I doubt it will be. Uh, measures of personality. Uh, how would uh, we go about that? Uh, these are non-cognitive characteristics, uh, interests, attitudes, values, opinions. Uh, there's an obje objective personality measure, which uh, requires uh, individuals to describe themselves by responding to forced choice items in a structured format instead of being questioned by the examiner. Uh, Self-report inventories present subjects with an extensive collection of statements describing behavior patterns and ask them to indicate whether or not each statement is a characteristic of their behavior. Now, think factor analysis because... Um, if we were to give, uh, 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 you know, a test, an objective personality assessment, uh, you would give a lot of items. Uh, and I think, uh, talk, yeah, okay, here, here, this again, perfect segue. Uh, let's say you want to determine if a person is paranoid. Uh, well, a totally unacceptable way is to say, hey, are you paranoid? Uh, that, that's not going to work. Uh, another totally unacceptable way is uh, to ask them a couple of uh uh, of uh, questions. Do you feel that people are always talking behind your back? And I expect the police to be fair and reasonable. Those are two questions that are kind of uh, not randomly chosen, but um, uh, semi-randomly chosen that may tap into some level of paranoia. Now what you would want to do if you really wanted to tap into paranoia is you'd want to search the literature, find a self-reporting inventory that's shown to be valid, shown to be reliable, shown to be objective, and is uh, shown to be able to identify paranoia, which is actually the, the, the validity part. Guys, I never will forget, this is one of my favorite movies, uh, <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. Actually, it's not one of my favorite movies. It is my favorite movie. I, I get bored watching movies, uh, even the, the best movies. I can usually watch one time. When I watch it the second time, it, it just, you know, it, 
I just remember too much, and it kind of takes the entertainment factor out, uh, uh, at least for me. Silence of the Lambs is one of those. I think I've watched this uh, 12, 13, 14 times. And one of my favorite comments, quotes, if you will, in the uh, movie is, Agent Starling, do you think you can dissect me with this blunt little tool? And I still love that English accent. I can hear it now. And, uh, and, and you know, when, when you study measurement, you know exactly what this guy's talking about. This guy's brilliant. He's insane. Uh, but again, he's brilliant. Uh, and uh, he's... Uh, uh, as, as a psychologist, I'm sure he has an extensive background in looking at these types of personality assessment um, assessment tools. So when you really get good at this, and I, I'm not good enough at it, but I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm okay at it, I can actually go on uh, these types of larger, these, these like personality tests, and I can see the underlying factors that they're trying to tap into. Now, I'm in nowhere near the, the level of intelligence that this character portrays in this movie. But even, uh, even at my mere talent levels, I can, uh, I can tap into that. So I love that, uh, I love that quote. So guys, in all your spare time, <laughs> go ahead and get... Uh, uh, Silence of the Lambs, or go to Netflix, or whatever. It's it's a great movie. Hopefully you've seen it. Uh, guys, scales are important. Um, I'm not going to talk a lot about scales, but um, scales contain items where the response uh, options consist of graduations or a numeric. Um, uh, anytime I think about scales, I think of a Likert scale, which uh, I think I talk about on the next screen. Actually, uh, it's very appropriate when measuring, uh, for example, attitudes. Uh, you know, we all have strong attitudes about certain things, and uh, either negative or positive. And sometimes we kind of have neutral uh, feelings, maybe a little. You know, uh, sometimes politically, I, I have friends that are just die-hard Democrats. Oh my gosh, they just feel like that uh, if someone's a Republican, they're a complete idiot. I have friends who are uh, die-hard Republicans, who think that anyone who uh, has liberal tendencies is just a complete. Uh, you know, bleeding heart liberal and just a complete idiot. Uh, I don't usually talk about politics, but I'm, you know, I'm, I don't have, I have strong feelings about certain issues, but it, it turns out that um, some of my strong feelings about certain issues are probably, well, not probably, but definitely agree more with uh, uh, the liberal perspective. And then I have very strong feelings about other things that uh, uh, would place me uh, more as a front of a kind of a strong conservative, so uh, I'm all over the place when it comes to that. Um, and, and I think if you, nah, no, 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 I'm not going to go there. Uh, we've already brought in Garth Brooks. Let's not bring in uh, Darbro talking about politics. So a scale is a set of categories or numeric values assigned to individuals, objects, or behaviors for the purpose of measuring variables. And scales differ. From tests, since the results do not indicate a success or failure, a strength or a weakness, just the degree to uh, which uh, someone exhibits a characteristic of interest. And uh, just as I thought, Likert scales, um, you got to remember, I, I prepare these things sometimes two weeks in advance. Uh, and It's actually been a while since I prepared this one, but uh, I re at least I remember the Likert scales were next, which is an obvious connection here. So uh, one of the most widely used uh, techniques to measure attitudes and um, uh, the, thing, the thing about Likert scales is you can not only do a comprehensive analysis, uh, is you can also do, you know, by summing up numeric responses, uh, you can also look at uh, uh, the responses across uh, each of the items. In guys Likert scale, typically we give uh, uh, Likert scales of either five or seven uh, components. Uh, the example I give you here is five. Strongly agree, agree, uh, undecided, disagree, and strongly disagree. And we give point values uh, to each one of those. So uh, you can sum up the points across the, the battery of uh, items. And you can also look at the uh, uh, performant item analysis.